Hello guys, um, I'm Dr. Mahotala from uh, the University of uh, Hartford and uh, this is our first video, actually my first video um, uh, doing a lab like this. So as you can see, um, this is the uh, work and energy lab uh, that I uh, did for Physics 112. Um, I know that you have uh, the lab manual with you, uh, but the lab manual work and energy lab is quite different from this. So basically what uh, you were doing, um, you actually have in your uh, lab manual is all about uh, kinetic energy and relating it to work. Um, but um, here uh, we are uh, going over uh, the relationship between the work and energy and also getting some understanding on uh, the conservation of energy. So in order to uh, save time, I am not going to go over the uh, theory uh, part. So I'm going to skip it. You can actually read all the way through and I'm going to get into the procedure. So I tried my best to write everything. Um, you can always send your feedback to me if you um, don't understand things along the way. Um, so what we do is the following. So uh, you have the link and I would like you to click on the link. And uh, it's best if you can uh, print, uh, get a printout of the document, um, the, um, the document that I am showing, which I'm going to share with your TAs. And let me uh, do this and also um, use the document on a side so I can actually go through the steps one by one. So here I click it and if it doesn't work that way then of course you can cut it and paste it on a browser. So this is what I have. I will um, have already constructed and uh, I'm going to start it from the beginning. And this is where you will be uh, led to when you click on the uh, link. And as it says, uh, set up a ramp to fit the problem below using the playground option. So this is the intro. The next is the friction uh, with, with friction. And the third one is the playground. So you can click on that. And this is what you get. Now the problem below um, has some shape. So you can actually... Um, go with that uh, go with that shape i mean you can try to build the shape using uh, these um, things by adding and uh, like dragging and dropping okay so uh, according to the picture that uh, i have given you uh, it looks like this i mean i'm not going to do it the whole thing all the way and you can connect it like that and you can drag it a little bit further like this and there you have something like the picture that is shown um, in the problem. So the problem says a skier of mass M starts from rest at height H above the end of a ski jump ramp and leaves the end of the ramp as shown in the figure. Uh, assume the ramp is frictionless so since it is frictionless I'm going to drag this button all the way to the none point so there's no friction so um, moving forward uh, now we need to uh, place the skier at the top of the uh, ramp so we just want to actually hold him there uh, but you know uh, what to um, how to do that and there it says uh, check the slow motion button and here's the slow motion button and um, we can uh, click on that and here you have a green uh, uh, square and down here you have um, the red square when you click on the green square the skier will start his move again so the second step in the uh, procedure says check the grid box. So here's the grid box. I checked it and y equals to one line. So where's the y equals to one line? So let me rearrange this a little bit to find the y equals to one line. And um, this is actually our y axis. And here you can see the scale going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So y equals to 1 would be this line. And I am going to use this as the, di as the line, uh, as the dashed line shown in the figure. So this is going to be my reference line for uh, all future 
uh, measurements you know the potential energy especially when you are looking at the gravitational potential energy you always pick a reference point um, where you have zero potential energy right so let's move on uh, check the speed box so here I check the speed box and you have the speedometer uh, right in front of you and um, it says use the default mass so I'm not going to change the mass I'm using the same mass as it as given over here and um, place the skier at the top of the ramp and observe how speed changes with the motion of the skier so I just click on this green button and uh, okay I think uh, yeah let's let it go like that and then as he moves uh, down the ramp um, you can see uh, let me actually put him right there and let me run it again and watch the speed uh, speedometer you can see that uh, when I release or when the uh, skier starts at the top he does not have any speed um, so he starts from zero and he's increasing the speed goes all the way to the up uh, to the top of the next uh, uh, top the ramp over here um, and then he finishes at this point right so you can see the speed is changing from zero to a highest value and then again dropping and coming down uh, coming uh, uh, going up again and then the uh, skier leaves the ramp at this point so we just have to observe that you guys have to observe that and then follow the same for the smallest and the la largest masses and observe how the speed changes with the motion of the skier so the first time you are just observing it and later on you have a bunch of questions that you need to answer so I'm not going to do all the work for you. So when you are so when you are supposed to uh, observe for the small mass, you are um, going from the default mass to the leftward. Um, there you can find the smallest mass, and then to the rightward, there you can find the largest mass, and then you can observe what happens. Now check the bar graph. Um, so you can get rid of the grid, and then. Um, Actually, I'm sorry you can get rid of the speed and you can go to the bar graph and you can see that the bar graph has um, kinetic energy potential energy thermal energy and the total the thermal will not uh, be shown in the picture uh, because we set the friction to none or we don't have um, any friction we are looking at a frictionless ramp so um, uh, I'm looking at the last uh, step on uh, uh, on the procedure there it says now check the bar graph go back to the default mass check the changes in kinetic energy and potential energy uh, kinetic energy potential energy and the total energy as the skier goes down the ramp you can get rid of the thermal energy by making the friction none and it is already done so I'm gonna um, let the skier go down from wherever he is right now actually is at the top of the ramp so here we go now you can see uh, you, uh, how the uh, kinetic energy changes and how the potential energy changes and the total energy graph. Now uh, so those are the observations that you need to make and let's go to the observations and calculations down uh, in the document. Uh, so uh, the first part it says for each mass you can take the masses as m1 m2 m3 and m2 is the default mass m1 is the low smallest m3 is the largest and um, uh, and you are to um, plot the speed as a function of h now what is h you can choose um, the slow down uh, slow motion which we have already done and what is h now h is the height of the um, of the ramp I mean height of the uh, uh, the location where the uh, skier is at so the first time you can see um, according to what I have over here um, the skier is at a position um, oh, oh. okay I just did something that I shouldn't have done okay I'm gonna remake my um, graph just like that so oh, I can actually quickly go to my other um, uh, window so here you can see that uh, the total energy uh, the kinetic and potential energy the bar graph okay that was the um, previous um, previous um, 
part that we did so I'm gonna get rid of the bar graph and also the speed so we just have what we have here so for each mass um, we are checking the uh, speed so I need the speed again and um, so uh, in the speedometer you can see that this is where the zero button is and then you have um, like uh, bigger marks over there and the smaller marks in between so if you can actually take this to be zero and between two bigger marks uh, the speed uh, you can take uh, as uh, two meter per second right so I want you to pick uh, four different height values um, so so this is where the skier is and you can take this height value as eight so this is the y reading and h value is eight and then you can pick another point somewhere over here that would be h equals to four and um, some uh, value over here and you can take this to be your reference value if you like and uh, you can actually pick y equals to one uh, the dash line place as your uh, reference value too it doesn't really matter where you pick it and then uh, over here you can take this as zero meter or negative one meter depending on how you take uh, your reference value and another point over here okay so uh, once you do that um, you can go to um, Excel and uh, you can record the height versus the speed so here I have started with a maximum height um, the, the place where the skier was at the top of the ramp and uh, when I was doing that I just took um, this is actually with reference to the second week window I picked and uh, I picked the uh, y equals to 1 position as my zero potential level so I measured um, the height h value from there um, although the graph reads as a uh, graph reads it as an 8 um, I have it recorded as 7 because from 1 to 8 uh, the height would be 7 and the speed is taken as 0 because the skier was not moving at the top of the ramp and then I picked a value um, height equals to 3 according to the graph the y value is 4 but with reference to the y equals to 1 uh, line this is only a 3 meter height and then the speed again uh, recorded as 8 and negative 1 was the lowest point where you have a highest speed recorded and then height uh, 5 going up again on the ramp there the speed is recorded as a 6 right so I am um, plotting over here this is the graph that I plot for plotted for the uh, for this set of data and the speed is recorded uh, uh, along the y-axis and then um, height is the x-axis so for um, you know how to plot a graph so I don't want to uh, discuss that and you can repeat the same for two other masses and then you are going to compare these three graphs and then discuss your observations and then the second part is choose one mass calculate the um, uh, gravitational potential energy GPE is the gravitational potential energy at two different heights and find the change in potential energy so the gravitational potential energy is given by mgh so you pick one point let's say h equals to h1 and the second point is h equals to h2 and h values you can take uh, from the graph and uh, you can find the gravitational potential energy using mgh1 and mgh2 so you don't know the value of m so you can just leave it as m1 and um, you can uh, your answer will have m in in it and then the third uh, question is choose the same two heights and the mass the same mass that you picked in uh, the second part and find the work done by the gravitational force now the gravitational force uh, is directly uh, pointed downward and uh, the equation that you need to find work is f dotted to d f dotted to displacement so the force is um, uh, the gravitational force which is mg and uh, the displacement is the height um, and in this case we are finding the height uh, the, we are taking uh, d equals to the height difference h2 minus h1 and then the angle between them is actually zero so uh, when you um, expand the dot product f dotted to d equals to f 
d cosine theta, where theta equals to 0, so cosine theta goes away, right? I mean, cosine 0 becomes 1, not going away, but cosine 0 is 1. So, um, so using that, you can find the w, the work done. Uh, during this displacement. Now, in the fourth part, you are comparing the answers for the second and the third parts um, in the um, in the uh, in the above parts, uh, the answers to the second and third parts, and coming up with an uh, equation uh, relating the gravitational potential energy to uh, I'm sorry, uh, the change in potential energy to W. And then the uh, last two parts, we are looking at, uh, we pick two masses and plot the total energy. So this is what we've been doing uh, earlier. Let me go back to where we were. So you just can uh, pick the default mass and you can uh, set, let this go. And then you can look at the total energy in this case. And then you can change the mass. You can go to a large uh, or a small mass and then you can uh, uh, do the run again and you will find um, a different energy um, depending on the size of the mass right so you don't have the energy as a number so either you can take the energy as e1 for the mass 1 and e2 for the second mass and um, you can do a plot for the same height so the heights are measured Again, with respect to the, um, the y-axis, I mean, you can just uh, read the y-axis re reading. Uh, you can use the same heights that you used in part one. And um, let me go back to the Excel file. So here I have um, some help for question number five. Uh, now the height values, I am using the same, 7, 3, negative 1 and 5. And the energy, um, this is the total energy that we are talking about. And I am using uh, that energy as E1. And um, along uh, all throughout, you didn't really see any difference. Um, uh, the uh, total energy did not change, right? So uh, it is hard for us to actually uh, plot this. Um, uh, on a graph so I decided to go with a mass um, equals to 2 kilogram and then uh, finding the E mechanical the mechanical energy using half mv square plus mgh equation and um, to get the total energy you know energy is conserved so I am looking at the topmost uh, point of the ramp where the kinetic energy term equals to zero and using that I can find the total energy uh, equals to this number 137.2 so you can also do the same and I uh, would like you to pick a second mass and that can be um, m, uh, 2 equals to 4 a kilogram and then uh, you can plot another graph for m2 uh, equals to uh, 4 kilogram as well and then I would like in question number 6 I would like you to discuss your observations in part 5 um, so if you see um, the energy, the total energy increasing or decreasing with the height uh, and also when you change the mass, what happens to the total energy, using equations and using your observations, you can discuss that. All right, good luck. Uh, oh, actually, by the way, I forgot to uh, add something else. Uh, when you are um, writing your lab report, I would like you to uh, get a screenshot uh, to uh, show what you did on the ramp. Like, you know, I would like you to get a screenshot. I don't want the uh, bar graph. Um, it's okay to leave the speed, uh, but I like you to have the grid and I like you to uh, show us the uh, construction of the ramp. And, um, and you can attach this to the lab report. Thank you guys. Stay, ho uh, stay home and be safe.